Bye. Bye.
Good morning. Good morning. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Welcome to Madison Avenue Christian Church. We are so glad to be worshiping with you on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning in person and online. If you are visiting with us, we ask that you fill out the perforated part of the bulletin and put that in the offering plate as it is passed. We'd like to get to know you a little better. We want to welcome the Brass Ensemble. Thank you for being with us in worship today and enhancing our worship service with your talents. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you to Karen Truman, who served the Continental Breakfast this morning in the Fellowship Hall, and the Easter egg hunt was quite a success. It was so good to see everyone mingling and the kids running about. Uh, fun was had by all this morning. I'd like to highlight some of the upcoming events. On Mondays and Wednesdays, our community meals are served at 5 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. This week on Wednesday, CWF, Christian Women's Fellowship, will be meeting here at the church in the Barton Stone Room. Barb Black and Debbie Peterson are hosting. All ladies are welcome to join us for dessert fellowship, and a Bible study led by Dare Miller. There will be an elders meeting after worship next week, April 7th. Lunch will be provided. Elders, please RSVP by Tuesday, April 2nd. There will be no children's church today so that everyone, youth, and leaders can worship together on Easter. Let us enter into worship. Let us stand together. <laughs> my strength, my song is the Lord, who has become my Savior. Glad songs of victory sound within the tents of the just. The tomb is empty. Sound the trumpet. The Lord is risen. Sound the trumpet. Christ leads us on the road of life. Sound the trumpets.
Please be seated. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. They who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. They who live and believe in me shall never die. Let us pray. risen Savior. By rising from the dead, you conquered the fear of death and brought us hope eternal. You have overcome all fears. You are triumphant. You rule over heaven and earth. So today we come in your presence to raise our hearts and our voices on high, glorifying your holy name. It comes easy, O oh God, in this your house of worship, to see your presence, to know that you are indeed victorious. Here we know that you never fail us. You're always with us. But it is out in our everyday lives when all kinds of challenges overwhelm us and we forget that you are there. And we forget that you are victorious. And so we find ourselves in despair. Today we pray that we would live every day knowing that you are indeed present with us, among us, and in us. We invite the risen Christ into our lives. Dwell in us, abide with us. We cling on to you because you are our hope. Cause us to live without fear. We pray for all kinds of things. Peace, end of war, no more hunger, no more homelessness. And most of the time we think that we have to do this ourselves. But today we know that you are the one who calls us by name to be your witnesses in this world. You are the one who empowers us. You lead us. You strengthen us. All we have to do is be obedient listeners. So speak, Lord. We are listening. Guide our path, and we would follow you in obedience. We give you thanks for the Church Universal. In the midst of all chaos, may your Church remind the world that you are indeed the triumphant Christ. The tomb is empty. The stone is rolled away. Our hearts are filled with joy. And we know that this indeed is a moment of miracles. We pray for those in hospitals, people who are recovering at home. We offer our personal prayers before you. 
fill this house of worship with your presence. May we rejoice because you are here. Hear us even now as we join in the prayer that you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm reading from Mark 16, verses 1 through 8. And when the Sabbath was done, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the door of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone was rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had come upon them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid.
I greet you in the name of the risen Christ. Mark's gospel is packed tight, but it never gets to the Easter celebration where Mark's gospel ends Brent does not get to pull all the stops the choir does not get to raise the voices high the brass just has to sit there and wait because that is where Mark's gospel ends and I submit to you that where Mark's gospel ends with the resurrection story is where our story begins and I hope we'll get to that point and when we leave this church we become the ones who would be the messengers of the good news of Jesus Christ. The story begins with Mary, Mother James, Mary Magdalene and Salome they are sitting there in their homes. What are they doing? They are waiting for the Sabbath to be over. They are waiting for the Sabbath to be over so that they can go and see the tomb. And they are going through all the rituals, grinding spices, preparing everything because all they are hoping is they can get to see the dead Jesus and a stone a huge rock that would be at the entrance of the tomb that is what they are waiting for going through rituals getting through the time Madison Avenue Christian Church, Christian Church Disciples of Christ, we may be the ones who may say no creeds but Christ. We may be the ones who say priesthood of all believers, but yet our lives, our faith may be marked by more rituals and phraseology that suits our convenience than the people who would burst into new life. That is how that day goes. They're waiting for the Sabbath. It is still dark. Good Friday is everywhere. And lo and behold, Sabbath is over and you would think they would get up to face something new. No. They get up and they are walking to the tomb and what is the conversation? Who will roll the stone? How would we get through that particular fixities of life? We all have things that represent that stone that is always there. All we want to do is somehow manage that moment. And we as managerial people we would be happy if we can just somehow get through that moment. Just somehow get through that moment. There is nothing spectacular. There is nothing enormously new that we expect. Just get through that moment. That is the Good Friday existence. And they go to the tomb. And what they were worried about namely the stone has been rolled away the tomb is empty and you would think 
they may for a moment think God is doing a new thing. Christ is victorious. The one who walked the streets of Galilee is again alive. No. Now the problem quadruples because it is no more within their managerial realm. They cannot manage this. It's gone beyond their imagination. Death that is so final now has a big question mark and exclamation next to it. And they don't know how to deal with it. And there is a person inside the tomb and says, He's not here. He is risen. He is gone before you to Galilee and there you will find him. He is not here. He is risen. Would these wonderful people say, my goodness, we were so worried about nothing. People of faith, that moment comes to us and passes by us because much of what we worry about often, that role gets rolled uh, that stone gets rolled away but that is the puzzling part of the story and he says he's not here he's risen he's gone before you to Galilee we have been with the story before but I have to say it again you've driven a long way so I'll do it he has gone before you to Galilee? How can that be? If it is something significant, if it is something important, it has to be Jerusalem. The risen Christ should have gone to Jerusalem. That is where the temple is. That is where the high altar is. That is where all the religiosity is. That is the place of power. That is where you look to for hope. That is where the risen Christ should have gone. That's not what the text says. He's gone before you to Galilee. And there you will see him. Galilee? Jesus, carpenter from Galilee, the fig tree in Galilee, the tax collector in Galilee, Galilee is where everyday life happens. Galilee is where you and I raise families. Galilee is where birthdays are celebrated. Galilee is where all of the contrasts of life mingle together. Galilee is where we wonder about death and life. Galilee is the place of challenge and triumph. That is where the risen Christ chose to go. The risen Christ did not go to the high altar but chose to come among us, to be with us, to live with us, to share in our challenges and not just every now and then to say, I have conquered the fear of evil and death. Why are you still in despair? Rise up. Hope is alive. And then you see, you would think, at least now, at least now, Mary and Mary and Salome would be excited, would be renewed, would be energized. No. Nope. That is where that story ends and that is why I said much of the joy of Easter is not in this text. How that story ends is, 
they were afraid, they were trembling, and they fell into deep silence because they didn't know how to talk about it. Much depends on how much we can internalize the good news of Jesus Christ and truly live knowing that Christ lives. If all that we do is go through rituals and come up with phrases, we may be in the same place as Mary and Mary and Salome. They were afraid. Folks, the risen Christ is gone before you to Galilee. The risen Christ is gone before you to where you live, where you work, where you meet friends and family, where you have sleepless nights, where you have big celebrations, the fear of death is over. Christ is triumphant, victorious. It is not winter anymore. The thaw, the flowing streams, the sounds of the birds, the blossom, the newness of life, all of it reminds us that the Creator is alive and well in our midst. And to the risen Christ be honor, power, glory, and majesty, now and forevermore. Amen.
You may be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you on this Easter morning, mindful of and thankful for all the blessings you have bestowed on us, including the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you will accept our gifts as we return a portion of what we have been given. Bless this offering, that it may be used to help your people and further your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. We are about to partake in the elements that represent the broken body of Christ and the cup that we share. It's not just Mary, the mother of James, and Mary Magdalene and Salome, who were afraid and who fell into silence and they ran away from the tomb. In Mark's Gospel, there is another person who's mentioned. When they saw the tomb empty, there was an angel inside the tomb who said, Go tell the disciples and Peter that he's not here, he's risen, he's gone before you to Galilee. Peter? Why single Peter out? Because Peter fell into deathly silence too. Who is this Peter? The rock on whom the church would be built? Peter, the one who occupies the pinnacle of living in faith. Peter, that message is directed straight to Peter and it is directed to you and to me and to the church. Why? Because Peter is sitting there mourning and groaning because he betrayed Jesus. And he feels he's not good enough. There is no way he can share in the glory of the risen Christ because he denied Jesus. So he deserves to sit somewhere in the 
dark when everything else is bright. That is Peter. That is the church sometimes. That is you and I sometimes. We kind of feel like mm, maybe I cannot fully participate in the good news of Jesus Christ because I have failed a few times. If you are there, come to this table. This is where our guilt is wiped away. We are restored to new heights. We are reminded that we have been created in the image of God. And we are told that Christ rose from the dead for us. And the one who is triumphant and victorious is the one who would carry us through life. For we belong to Christ and none would be exempt. So come to this table. All are welcome, unconditionally loved, always restored, joy abound. The gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. at this table. Will you join me in a prayer of thanksgiving? Loving God, so often when we gather at this table, our minds focus on sorrow, on the immediate events of the evening of its institution. But this morning, we are shouting Hosanna, hallelujah. Help us to remember that this table commemorates so much more than the sorrow of that one evening. Let us never lose sight of the fact that the bread and the cup represent promise and hope, your new covenant with your people. So let us come with awe and with gratitude and humility and joy. We ask this in the name of the one who gave the greatest gift. Amen.
I'm reading from Mark 4, verse 22 through 25. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Drink ye all of it. If you have been visiting with us, and Easter morning is the time to stop being a visitor and officially become a member of this joyful congregation, you are invited to come forward during the singing of our closing hymn to be welcomed, or to contact Simon or one of the elders at a time of your choosing. Christ arose, so let's sing it. Mm -hmm. 